Today we're taking on the impossible. We started nice and easy with the Wilson brand, but now we're diving right into the deep end with Head. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what's so difficult about analyzing the Head brand? Well, here's what. Head has so many different top end rackets that I bet you if I try to lift them off the top of my head right now, me, a guy whose literal life is dedicated to analyzing tennis product, is probably going to forget at least one silo. Boom, Radical, Speed, Extreme, Prestige, Gravity. I actually did a pretty good job, but I'm a consummate professional, what can I say? I can't believe the Gravity is the one I almost forgot though, we all know how I feel about that racket. But before we go on, as usual, a little bit of housekeeping. Remember that any of the rackets we mention here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, and let me know down in the comment section what product you want me to look at next. So anyways, I thought it was kind of the perfect time to take a look at Head's lineup because the last 360 plus finally fell and every racket now has Auxetic. And no, by the way, the Instinct is no longer a top end racket. So we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about each frame and I figured the best way to organize them would be in order of most powerful to least powerful. But today we are only talking about pro labeled rackets. I promise you we'll do the MPs very soon, but today it's the pros. I'm sorry if that's not what some of you want, but don't get mad at me, I don't make the rules. Actually, I do make the rules. I literally make the rules. So that means we're taking a look at the Boom Pro, Prestige Pro, Speed Pro, Radical Pro, my personal favorite, Gravity Pro, and because the Extreme Pro isn't available in North America, we're going to sub in the Extreme Tour. Now before we get into any specific rackets, I did just want to take a brief second here to talk about the Head brand in general. I think I've made it pretty clear over the past several months that I've got a soft spot for Head. I grew up playing with the Microgel Extreme, so there's definitely some nostalgia in there for sure. But also, Head's MO has always been more on the side of softness, feel, and control, which I've always really appreciated. They went through a bit of a darker period in the 2010s because they ventured a little bit too far away from that core identity, but developing Auxetic has really helped put them back at the top of the game in terms of control and feel. Let's get into it before this video gets ridiculously long. Now, to be honest, when I'm coming up with the ideas for these videos, I kind of just wing it, and the whole power spectrum thing felt like a good idea, but looking at all these rackets, none of them are really all that powerful. If we did have access to the Extreme Pro, this would be a lot easier, and to be fair, I know that Pro rackets aren't really supposed to be all that powerful, but it's kind of insane to think that the Head Radical Pro is the most powerful racket on this list, and yes, I know I'm going away from Head CPI big time in saying that. I'm sorry that CPI is just wrong in this case. The Radical Pro really isn't all that powerful of a racket, but it does pack more of a punch than the other frames on this list, mainly due to its really high swing weight and then this undulating modernly shaped beam. This modern beam design basically makes the racket more sturdy on contact, which means the frame doesn't flex as much, which basically means it's going to be more powerful, more forgiving, and just generally have a bigger sweet spot. That said, the beam itself is pretty thin, so you still get plenty of feel, precision, and directional control, but it is just a notch under some of the other rackets on this list. The Radical Pro is also a pretty spin-friendly racket. It does have one of those 16 by 19 string patterns that get a little bit tighter in the middle of the string bed there, but there's still plenty of room for string movement and snapback for spin. Overall though, the Radical Pro really does fit its radical diversity marketing to a T. It's a jack of all trades racket that does everything very well, maybe nothing exceptionally well, but it's a very solid racket and if you can handle that high static and swing weight, it's going to be perfect for an all court style of play. The Extreme Tour is a very, very close second in terms of power compared to the Radical Pro, and some people might actually say it's more powerful, but I don't think so. It is stiffer and has a thicker beam, but because the swing weight is so much lower, I just can't say it has the same top end power generating potential, at least in stock form compared to the Radical Pro. Other than that though, the Extreme Tour is a very interesting racket that in a lot of ways is much more radical than it is extreme. As you can see, the general head shape and beam design is very similar to the Radical, so in terms of feel and even where the sweet spot is located on the racket, they're actually quite similar. It does have a couple very important characteristics though that give it the right to be called an extreme. For one, the string bed density is much more open than the one that's on the radical, and the other big thing is that it has much more open spin grommets here at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions. That helps to give it an element of spin that pretty much no other pro racket, or in this case tour racket, has in the head brand, and cements it as the best modern player spin racket that head has to offer, and one of the best modern player spin rackets in the world. It's become an extremely popular frame amongst these modern day big hitters because it's still very spin friendly, 
but it has an element of precision and control thanks to that 98 square inch head size that you're just not going to get with more traditional spin rackets. I also just wanted to mention that the previous Extreme Tour made a huge splash in the industry because it was all new and bling, but I actually think that with the introduction of Auxetic in this one, it's much, much better in terms of feel and pretty much equal in every other metric. Okay, so moving on to the Boom Pro here, we're kind of taking a pretty big step down in terms of power. In fact, to me, there's three pretty clear tiers of power on this list. Obviously, like I mentioned, the Radical Pro and the Extreme Tour are kind of in their own tier. Then you've got the Boom Pro and the next racket. And then the last two rackets are kind of in their own tier as well. The Boom has kind of become a forgotten racket. And to be honest, when it first came out, I thought to myself, head, do we really need another silo? But playing with it again this week, I can't help but think this thing is really underrated. The biggest thing with the boom is this unique shape here with the squared off top portion of the head. It's actually pretty similar to the new V-Core, which is a racket that's gotten a lot more hype, but in a lot of ways, I actually think I prefer the boom. What squaring the head up here does is move the sweet spot a little bit farther up the frame and then opens up the string bed in that sweet spot. That just means that when you do make proper contact in the sweet spot, you get a little bit more leverage over the ball for both power and spin. The slight issue with that is that like the V-Core, it adds an element of risk to your shot. What moving the sweet spot higher up the frame does is basically give you more of everything. So power and spin, yes, but also difficulty level and the potential for a slightly wild launch. Unlike the V-Core though, and this is why I think I like the boom maybe a little bit more, it still has a traditional constant and fairly thin beam. So you still have fantastic feel and you only lose out in a little bit of control compared to more traditional head designs. Overall though, the Boom is a fantastic racket that I personally mesh with very well. I also think that with the Boom and the V-Core, this head shape is going to get a lot more popular over the next several years because it really does complement that modern attacking style very well. Okay, so obviously this isn't a current Speed Pro, and you're also going to be able to tell from the footage that the Speed Pro footage isn't from the same day as all the other rackets, that's because I kind of forgot about the speed when I took them out to demo. Don't blame me, blame Head for having 100,000 different rackets. I can't keep track of them all, although I probably should if this is my job. But anyways, don't worry, I've played a lot of tennis with the Speed Pro, so I consider myself a bit of an expert. Also, the only reason I have this racket, and it's not actually a Speed Pro, it's a Speed MP, it's the one that Sinner uses, but I figured, I don't know, maybe I should try this racket, because there's clearly some magic to getting that effortless power he has, so maybe if I play with it, I'll be able to get that. Didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> anyways, back to the Speed Pro, we're just going to have to pretend that this is it for a bit, but it's pretty similar in terms of power to the Boom Pro, maybe just a little bit under it because of that 18 by 20 string pattern. Also, I did just want to point out that the next few rackets on this list are all 1820s, but the speed is noticeably more powerful than the next two. The beam is a pretty thick 23 millimeters, but more importantly, it's shaped with that modern kind of beam design in mind, whereas the next two are much more traditional. Even though it is constant, like I mentioned earlier, this modern beam shape is meant to be sturdier on contact, which just means it has a more rigid and therefore more powerful launch. It still is very much a control racket though, with its soft RA and tight string pattern. It's also solid, stable, and consistent, which are kind of the primary things you should be looking for in a control racket. What I will say is if the Radical is a jack of all trades compared to the rest of the industry, the Speed Pro is a jack of all trades compared to other control rackets. It's still spin friendly, powerful, and fairly user friendly, and while it is very good for control, it's a clear notch under the best. I also want to call the Gravity Pro a jack of all trades control racket because it does have decent power and very good spin, but jack of all trades kind of implies not being the best at any one thing, and there's no way I'm saying that because I honestly believe the Gravity Pro is the best control racket. At this point, we all know how much I love the Gravity Pro, and reading some of your comments, it seems like a lot of you agree with me that this is somewhat of a magical racket. It's got an ultra thin, super soft 20 millimeter beam, so the feel, precision, and control is up there with some of the best rackets I've ever used. To be honest, the more I play with this racket, the higher up it goes on my all-time ranking. I think at this point, if you ask me to pick between these two rackets for control, I'm gonna have to go with the Gravity Pro, which I know is controversial, but what can I say? So as we've established, fantastic for control, but then that 100 square inch head size gives it an element of spin, power, and user friendliness that pretty much no other racket this good for control actually has. It's an enigma to me. Honestly, I love the Gravity Pro, and I think that pretty much every advanced player should at least try it just to feel how good it is and see if it could work for their game. Very rarely is a racket this good at everything, but also truly the best at one thing. Honestly, it's kind of like a better Speed Pro, but it definitely doesn't make that racket obsolete because the Speed Pro is definitely quite a bit more powerful and also easier to use.
The Prestige Pro is by far the least powerful racket on this list. It's the most classic feeling frame in Heads lineup and one of the last true classic feeling rackets in the industry in general. Now I did have to give the Prestige Pro out for demo after my play test, so just pretend this MP is actually a Pro. And also this is a little bit off topic, but I just looked at the Prestige MP CPI of 400 here. And the fact that this is 400 and the Radical Pro is 200 is legitimately insane to me. I don't know who's coming up with these numbers over there at Head, but I've played a fair bit with the Prestige MP and there is no way you can convince me this racket is more powerful than the Radical Pro. Anyways, back to the Prestige Pro. I do hope that at some point in their tennis career, every player has the chance to play with the Prestige or at least a racket like the Prestige. I know it's a bit of a dying breed, but the feel and connection you have for the ball with this racket really is incomparable to anything else. Such a soft, thin beam and really small sweet spot gives you this unique sensation of almost being able to grab the ball with your hand and place it where you want on the court with total control. I do understand why the Prestige has lost some popularity over the years though. It's not that this playability is antiquated, but it is a very difficult racket to use. And I have to say the spin potential on this racket is quite a bit under even some other pure control rackets. The Gravity Pro, for example, has very similar levels of control, feel, and precision when compared to the Prestige, but it just performs so much better in other more important modern metrics that it's kind of tough to justify going with the Prestige. It is more maneuverable than the Gravity Pro though, so for those of you who want to add maybe a little bit more variety to your game, it is still great in that aspect. So there you go, after what, almost 12 minutes of talking about head rackets, we're finally done covering all of them. It actually wasn't that difficult to distinguish between them, but I can't deny the fact that there is a lot of overlap in Head's lineup. Each one does have at least some element of uniqueness to it though, so I really don't think that Head needs to trim any rackets out. If I were to boil it down to a simple phrase for each, this is what I'd say. Prestige, classic control, gravity, modern control, speed, postmodern control, boom, new design, and radical would be jack of all trades, but honestly, they kind of nailed it with radical diversity. I forgot a racket again, Extreme Tour, modern spin racket. I really can't wait to do the MPs. I think it'll expose bigger differences between the rackets, and I always like talking about head frames, so we'll do that one soon. But there you go, that's going to be it from us today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I was able to shed some light on the daunting head lineup. And remember that if you want to demo any of these rackets, you can come visit us in store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca. Thank <laughs> you.